All right, I want to finish up this unit with one more uh, problem involving an infinite geometric series. And it's important to contrast this video, or this example in particular, with the one we did in the last video. And so the first thing to notice is that our, uh, our sum is given in sigma notation. And so it's often useful to just write out the first few terms for yourself, uh, just so you can kind of get a sense of... Um, uh, what the numbers look like when they're exp when the notation is expanded. So when you plug 1 in for k, you're going to get 3 fifths times 5 halves to the 0. Uh, sorry, you're going to get 3 times 5 halves to the 0, so that's just 3. When you plug in 2, you get 3 times 5 halves to the 1. And when you plug in 3, you get 3 times 5 halves squared. Alright, so we get a good sense of what it's looking like. Now I'm putting a dot 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 here because, well, this is an infinite series, right? I'm not stopping. Um, so to analyze this, let's make a table as we've been doing. And our function output values are um, 3 for the first one. I'm going to actually simplify that 3 times 5 halves is just 15 halves. That third term would be 75 fourths. Um, and so <clears throat> I'm going to add a column here, as we've been doing before. I'm interested in the sum function here, right? Um, oh, by the way, the nth term, this is actually very easy to, to determine when we're in, uh, or when the expression is given in sigma notation, because, well, it's written right here. Right? That's sort of one of, the, the, one of the properties of sigma notation, is that the closed form is right inside. So this is 3 times 5 halves. Now, since it's an n, I'm inputting n instead of k, I'd obviously write to the n minus 1. Okay, so now our s of n column, well, the sum of the first term would just be 3. The sum of the first two terms is 3 plus, um, 3 plus 15 halves. So actually, I'm going to write 15 halves now as a decimal. I think that's more useful. Uh, that would be 7 and a half, 7.5. So that equals 10.5. The sum of the first three terms would be 3 plus 7.5 plus um, 75 fourths is 18.75 oops and that all adds up to um, 29.25 All right, and so um, we want an expression for the sum of the first n terms. And then what we're going to do is we're going to examine what happens when n goes to infinity. So I'm going to see if I can shrink this here. Hey, it's working. All right, so let's use Euclid's method. So we'll do that over here. So we know that the sum would be, sum of the first n terms would be 3 plus 3 times 5 halves to the 1 plus 3 times 5 halves squared. And again, hopefully you've seen my other videos enough to get the idea that it's going to keep going until 3 times 5 halves. Now be careful here. Go over to your table. When you plug in n, that output is 3 times 5 halves to the n minus 1. Okay, because again, remember, we're adding, we're adding up the first n terms. Now, if I multiply both sides of this by um, 5 halves,
Well then, that's going to turn this this first three into three times five halves, and it's going to bump every single term up in terms of the exponent on the five halves. This one's going to be three times five halves to the n minus one. And then the last one is going to be 3 times 5 halves to the n. And we subtract and we get, so here it's really 1s, but I'm going to, it's useful to view it as 2 halves s, right? because then I can subtract these fractions. 2 halves s minus 5 halves s is negative 3 halves s. And that's going to equal 3 minus this 0 here is 3, and 0 minus 3 times 5 halves to the n is negative 3 times 5 halves to the n. All right, and so now let's, so let's actually Let's multiply both sides by the reciprocal here. The reciprocal of negative 3 halves is negative 2 thirds. So s equals negative 2 thirds times 3 minus 3 times 5 halves to the n. And then for aesthetic purposes, let's distribute this 2 thirds just to kind of get that fraction out of there, the negative 2 thirds rather. So if you distribute to this 3, it becomes a negative 2 because those threes divide, uh, the threes cancel, I guess I should say. And then negative two-thirds times this negative three, five-halves to the n. Well, again, the threes just divide out, and you get positive two times five-halves to the n. Okay, so maybe, maybe we write, um, well, no, this is fine. We can leave it like this. All right, so that is our expression. That would go right here. So it's negative 2 plus 2 times 5 halves to the n. Now, that's the sum of the first n terms, but go back to the original problem. We're interested in what happens as n goes to infinity. So in, in essence, I just want to, for some notation reasons, we just found we found that as k goes from 1 to n of 3 times 5 halves to the k minus 1, what we just found was that that equals, there's a closed formula for that, and that equals what we just came up with, negative 2 plus 2 times 5 halves to the n. And so what we're interested in, though, is we want this n to go to infinity. So as n goes to infinity, we get negative 2 plus 2 times 5 halves, and I'm, I'm just going to put an infinity there. And what I want you to notice is that 5 halves, which is 2.5, to the infinity really implies that you're just going to take 2.5 and times it by 2.5 and times it by 2.5 over and over again. And as you do this, forever, the output, the, the numbers you're getting are getting really big. They're approaching infinity. And so as, as, if n approaches infinity, we should expect this to become infinity. So you essentially have negative 2 plus infinity, but that's infinity. Okay. When this happens, if you compare this to the last video, we say that, um, we say that our original problem, we say it diverges. So diverges. Okay, as n goes to infinity, then the sum does not approach a finite number in the word. It doesn't converge to a finite number, so it diverges. Alright, so this wraps up my uh, discussion on infinite geometric series.